Witness 2 investigator Pam Zeckman first raised the red flag about a potential serial killer on the loose. Her explosive report has victims, families, and community leaders demanding answers now. And today, the head of Chicago police finally told us exactly what's being done to solve these murders. This isn't something we're going to, you know, sweep under the rug or just put up on the shelf for it to disappear. We, we still investigate these cases. Johnson says he's deeply concerned about these 50 deaths, but... There's just simply nothing there right now that suggests that we have serial killers in the city of Chicago. As we previously disclosed, the head of the Murder Accountability Project, Thomas Hargrove, says research might show otherwise. It is highly unlikely that these 50 women were murdered by 50 separate men. Hargrove says his computer formula highlights a pattern of killings. 50 women strangled and dumped since 2001 that could signal a serial killer. Those are the three uh, killing fields, uh, South Side, Far South Side, and Chicago's West Side. We caught up to Superintendent Johnson at a police cadet ceremony earlier today. These cases uh, going through these alleys, dumped in garbage cans, set on fire, they're horrible. It, 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 horrific cases, you know, tragic, and nobody deserves to die in that fashion. Gwendolyn Williams is one of the victims. Her sister, Sharon Pritchett, remembers the day she was killed. She was fighting for her life. That's the first thing we all thought to ourselves. Whatever was going on with her, she was not going to go down without a fight. Superintendent Johnson says investigators will take another look at DNA evidence to help find the killer or killers. We're looking at them now to see if we can go back and do some additional testing to see if that will help us uh, bring to the forefront who these individuals are. Superintendent Johnson is also asking anyone with any information regarding the 50 unsolved murders to contact the police. And Rob and Erica, we have an interactive map right on our website at cbschicago.com. You can click on the various dots where the bodies were found and get information about who it was and some of the circumstances and when it happened. And then Welcome to Talking News. And there is talk about... A possible serial killer in Chicago but police want to sh you know push people shun them away from that idea but you know there's facts don't lie you have 75 women that have been strangled or smothered in Chicago uh, since 2001 and most of the killers got away as you can see in this title I think what the problem is, is most of them are drug addicts, you know, they're prostitutes, and their lives don't seem to matter to other people, but who were these people before they were prostitutes, before they were drug addicts? And um, a lot of the drug addicts today are not actually drug addicts because they decided one day that's what they wanted to grow up to be. In fact... It's a, it's a real problem that we need to start to address a little bit and find solutions for. So supposedly, the serial killer in Chicago is strangling and then burning bodies in alleyways and things like that. And public is putting heat on, you know, the police department to reopen some of these cases and look into it again. And I am so glad that they're putting the pressure on uh, these investigators because every life really does matter. Just because a human fails doesn't mean we should turn our back on them. So they strangle some of these women. They're naked. And they throw their bodies into a dumpster. You know, set it on fire. And as authorities find these dead bodies through some form or another they try to identify them and a lot of times it's very difficult so they have to use you know their dinner records and things like this but somebody loves these people somewhere and they matter to someone and just because society today says that weak people are considered you know not worth caring about we need to change that outlook. 
Now, one case that was incredibly shocking was this. You can see here that Mr. Williams is, he prays in front of a photo of his cousin, uh, Theresa Bunn, who was one of those girls that were murdered by strangulation. She was pregnant. She was eight months pregnant, in fact, and she was found naked and her body was burned to the point they could not identify her. She was left there to die. And um, these are one of the cases that are still unsolved. In the article, I'm going to read for you. Well, in 2007, Chicago police spokeswoman Monique Bond admitted to reporters. There are similarities in the matter of death and how the bodies were disposed of. Yet, the DNA of those cases haven't matched to other cases or anyone um, in their database. So, no information that they have gathered gives police any indication that they're dealing with a serial killer. The problem with this is, we're noticing that they're using a database through their PC and depending on perfect matches to set a law of what a computer says a serial killer is. Now, back in the old days, serial killers did have a likeness. They had this one thing that they usually did and they could make those connections to other killings to say, hey, it looks like we have a serial killer going on right now. But the truth of it is, we're in the future now. I don't believe there's going to be a law of what a serial killer is or who he is or going to even give you a clue that he is a serial killer because in most cases they do not want to be caught. They realize that times have changed and maybe the serial killers are changing with it. Now I'm not saying that there is a, a serial killer in Chicago but if people believe there's a chance that there is maybe we should listen and not depend on the computer to tell us so you know m you know these people are concerned maybe they're right the best thing we can do is investigate look into it deeper and you know prove them either right or wrong i mean if they enjoy doing this they're not going to go out there and uh, especially in these times with the technology of forensics it's it's really on top right now and so it's easy to catch someone and uh, you know prove that if they have any type of DNA connection or personal connection to that uh, case that they are the killer they don't want to be proven a killer in fact they want to stay free they want to keep living their life and they're going to do whatever it takes to do that, I mean, to live and not be thrown in prison. So with that being said, what would killers or serial killers do in the future? So in most cases, I would have to think that they're going to change their killing styles to mix it up a bit. They want to throw you off their track. And police should be aware of this and this should make them up their game instead of closing the book. As we move on into the future, you're going to notice that money's going to play a huge factor. And as the population grows, they're going to um, lack on having enough people in order to perform a job very well. So I'm sure with all the murders increasing especially in big cities like Chicago uh, money and time is a factor and should we push them to hire more people so that they can focus on doing their job correctly and do a job well done now as I mentioned before they're depending on the computer like um, Chicago Chief Detective uh, Melissa Staples pointed out the fact that DNA evidence is regularly collected at the homicide scenes and entered into a national database um, combined DNA index system, it's K 
capital C-O-D-I-S. None of the DNA profiles at the, um, well, they're trying to say that they don't match with one another. And, and so, since they don't match, these murders in Chicago are not connected to a serial killer. But, you know, that's just where we're going in the future. That's how they're doing it now. And I remember when they first started doing the banking. Um, I'm sorry, I'm saying it backwards. When they first started doing this type of uh, computer uh, programs, they actually were doing it for banks, where banks were actually keeping up with accounts uh, for um home mortgages and things like that and it turned out during the home crisis that they blamed the people for which was not the people's fault um, a lot of people were getting these bills that didn't belong to them for example one guy had paid his house off in cash and they were threatening to foreclose on his house and nobody caught on to that because the bank computers were actually making all these decisions and there was not a human being to back that up and make sure that it was correct it ended up he ended up taking them to court and suing them thank god but you know we cannot depend on computers like that especially at the beginning they're still infants computers we just invented the tv not long ago now we have cell phones and now they're trying to put all of their, you know, reliance on the computer far too early. So my point is, there could be a serial killer among them, and he just doesn't fit the old style rules. So it's, you know, it's old school methods that they put into the futuristic um, style. So I don't know how that's going to come out, but thing is is you have a lot of murders going on in Chicago they're pushing them pretty hard I believe the community is pushing them pretty hard and we'll find out I'm doing this on the go guys um, but whether or not in the near future I hope fingers crossed that I'm sure the families of uh, victims are they have double fingers crossed hoping to find out answers because just because they are, you know, not what we find to be the best human being in our books. Their lives matter because somebody loved them. And love should matter. I mean, you got to stick to your morals. You got to stick to your values. And life, every life must count. Otherwise, we will lose ourselves. Now, this is definitely a talking news episode, and I will try to do more detail in this uh, story in coming out of Chicago that about this possible serial killer as we get more information, but right now it's still kind of, you know, in its infancy. So let's see where it goes, and I will update you as soon as I can. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later. Don't forget to subscribe.